Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, actually, quite surprised to see so many people. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, the title, I, I wanted to make it a bit catchy. Um, it's maybe over dramatized, but still. Um, let's begin. So, uh, some of you already know me, but. Uh, my name is Dominik Mirajewski. Uh, I go by the, by the uh, handle Rathan, and I have commit ac direct commit access to around 100 packages in Fedora. But being a proven packager lets me <laughs> touch a bit more. Uh, I'm also a proven. Uh, I'm also a sponsor, and hold or used to hold some other uh, titles in Fedora over the years because yeah, I've been contributing to Fedora for quite some time. I think it's around 13 years now. Um, so, long time here. And I intend to stay. <laughs> um, so, uh, today we're talking about um, what, <clears throat> what you should not do in the packages and fortunately Fedora guidelines prevent us from doing that, or at least give us clear guidance. Uh, but still, uh, outside Fedora, there is a whole world of RPM packages that don't follow those rules. And I, I will show you some examples of the things people do in those packages that <coughs> make you cringe, to say the least. Uh, but first, I'll uh, give a brief uh, overview of our best packaging practices, as a reminder, uh, to reference uh, when going over each case that I have. Um, so, um, most of you, uh, at least those who are package maintainers, should already know the best practices of packaging. And of course, these apply not only to Fedora, but uh, to software packaging in general. Uh, in the package metadata, we need to have an uh, explicit list of files that the package owns or wants to touch because, as we know, R RPM, can be RPM database can be queried uh, for the list. And we can uh, <clears throat> we can ask our RPM uh, database uh, what f which package a given file belongs to, and so that's very important. Uh, for discoverability and maintainability of, of packages and, and keeping track of what we have on, on the machine, on the file system. Uh, the other important thing, which is uh, in some, which is in my opinion, it has in, some, in my opinion become a bit more difficult uh, these days is uh, the no, no bundling uh, policy which we used to have in Fedora which is now relaxed, uh, but yeah, it, has, it has its pros and cons, as many of you know. Uh, but in general, we should avoid uh, bundling more than one <coughs> software project in, in our package uh, and to try to make use of the uh, libraries and other projects uh, available in the distribution or if, if if we are bringing an entire new stack of software, uh, each, each, each component should be packaged uh, separately so that it can be reused by other new consumers. And uh, <coughs> following that uh, is the man mandate to use shared libraries as much as possible, uh, because as we all know, when you detect a security vulnerability in a library, updating just that one with a fixed version uh, fixes all its consumers. Oh, in theory, it should fix all its consumers, unless uh, someone someone built uh, against a static version. Then that one needs to be rebuilt. Of course, some uh, software ecosystems like uh, Go or I think Rust as well. Uh, not very uh, familiar with either. Uh, they basically mandate <laughs> vendoring or bundling and are 
maybe moving towards the uh, shared libraries, but not not so fast. Uh, so everything needs to be rebuilt with with each. Oh, and I think Okamu as well uh, needs to be. Everything needs to be rebuilt when 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 there is a new compiler or there is a new uh, library version. Um, so. It, Another thing is that, uh, well, at least in, in Fedora or in RPM ecosystem, uh, we don't really support uh, interactive installations. Uh, there is no guarantee that there will be a, a live uh, user or even a terminal present when an RPM is being installed. So that's uh, an, another thing to avoid uh, in RPM packages. And. Uh, for mostly for security reasons, but uh, um, we, we cannot assume that uh, the, the user account under the under a package under which a package is built uh, is in any way privileged. So um, we we do installations in a, a subdirectory where we have access to uh, right, but. We don't touch the uh, root file system during build, uh, nor should we. <laughs> and uh, this is distribution specific, of course, but uh, in general, our RPM package should integrate with the rest of the distribution well, uh, meaning it should follow the defaults, like, for example, uh, we should follow uh, cryptographic policy uh, that we have in Fedora. Other distributions have, have their own uh, standards, policies, or quirks. So uh, it depends from distro to distro. Uh, but as a general rule, yeah, we should integrate well. For example, oh, firewall D versus IP tables. Uh, if we, we have firewall D right, uh, as a default right now. So if, if your package supports both, well, uh, I mean, you, sh you should support firewall D as well. Uh, if, if possible, and, and that should be the default. But uh, I think with Boolean uh, dependencies, we can, for example, if, if we put things in a sub package, one for firewall D, one for IP tables, uh, you could get those installed automatically depending on what the user has installed. Just a thought. Uh, and of course, the builds should be reproducible, so each time you build from the same exact uh, source uh, or commit in uh, this kit, you should get the same package. So like, I think it's, it's also, yeah, it, it is codified in, in the guidelines that uh, we should actually <clears throat> try to patch out uh, uh, dates or timestamps from, from generated, from files that are generated at build time to help reproducibility. Right, so uh, let's move on to the interesting cases which I actually encountered in the wild, uh, mostly during my job <laughs> at City. Um, so uh, this was actually, uh, well, I did edit the excerpts uh, so that the guilty parties are not named, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this will be most, mostly in the scriptlets. Uh, so this ties very well uh, with the um, recent proposal uh, to, uh, what was it called, to, to make uh, RPM packages uh, archives instead of uh, what, 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 was the, what was the phrase? Privilege, Privilege escalation <laughs> bombs or something like that. Yeah, because uh, the script does la run as root uh, during ins installation, actual RPM installation, so yeah, you have to be careful. Uh, so what, what what was done wrong in that in that uh, excerpt? Uh, user in interaction, right? As, as I mentioned, uh, as the best practices dictate, uh, RPM packages are non-interactive by design, unlike uh, DPKG, uh, for example. So we, we cannot assume that there is a user or terminal, and uh, we should provide a safe working default configuration if there is a need for one, or if it really requires 
manual intervention by an, an admin or I don't know what, some um, configuration management tool, then there should be a, uh, at least some documentation provided on uh, what parameters need to be specified because they cannot be guessed or detected. Um, right, so Jamilian. <laughs> of course, you won't, you won't see that in Fedora, although I think there's one or maybe a couple of packages which try to be distribution agnostic, uh, but uh, yeah, we don't do this in Fedora, but uh, outside yeah, people try to write packages, uh, write spec files for multiple distributions and they, they end up with, uh, with constructs like this. And uh, well, in my opinion, it's not not a good practice because it well, it's of course uh, nice to have everything in one place, uh, but um, depending on which which distribution versions you want to support, the, the scripts can get unwieldy and uh, actually harder to maintain. So uh, I think it's better to just have separate uh, spec files uh, for for each uh, distribution that you want to support, um, because I, it it also can uh, lead to having uh, files that I mean dropped on the file system from inside the scriptlet, and they will not be owned by RPM unless you take special care to do that using uh, Ghost directive in the, in the in the file section so yeah, it gets complicated so it's better uh, one spec file for one distribution unless it's you know I mean e even even between Fedora and, and Rel uh, there are some differences for many packages you can have the same spec file and build everything from uh, from the master branch but uh, sometimes the, the dependencies are different and you have to enable, disable things in configure or whatever the build, what the build system is. So it yeah. uh, gets, gets complicated to, to do it in one spec file. But it's, this is not, not, not the worst. But, uh, what, what I would suggest, uh, like I said, separate branches, separate spec files for, for each uh, distribution and uh, doing automated builds. Uh, which there are a lot of talks about doing automated builds uh, uh, these days, so choose your poison. <laughs> um, yeah, this one was a killer. Yeah, I actually, uh, yeah, I encountered that. I mean, the package did drop files in a specific directory that it was afterwards uh, removing in a post uninstall scriptlet. But the uh, developer didn't take into account that another package might also drop files in the same directory. So uh, when, actually, I, I, I had one outage when uh, we were uninstalling some uh, legacy package from, from all, all servers. And uh, um, a few minutes after we did it, uh, a colleague called me, hey, this, my software stopped working. What what are you doing? I'm installing some other package. Well, but the, all the files are gone. And then I went inside uh, the, actually, I didn't, have, I didn't even have a spec file, just the binary RPM. And I saw this in the script. I said, ah, OK, well, yeah, we know what to do. Just use no, no scripts in this case and never install this again. <laughs> yeah, so. have to be careful with shared directories. So <coughs> let, let RPM do its job, list everything in, spec, uh, in, in the files section. And uh, you know, if, if, if there are files generated at runtime, um, you can also list them in files uh, using the ghost directive. Uh, you, you, you can specify the expected attributes also, as well so that uh, RPM dash uh, capital V uh, also works well, to the extent that it can to verify the, the the file mode and ownership, so on. So yeah, there are, there are better solutions than just running uh, RM dash RF <laughs> uh, in, in a scriptlet. 
say, wait, do we have some way to rebuild the binary package or uh, like remove the script files? Because thinking about yes. like, in this case, I should not run, run script files, it's like pretty big. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a big hammer not to, not to not run any scriptlets. <clears throat> and yes, there is a way to rebuild a binary package. Uh, I mean, like reverse engineer a binary package to get a, a spec file from it. Uh, there's a tool called RPM Rebuild. And actually, I was surprised to, to, to find it. I wasn't aware of it a couple of years ago. But uh, my <clears throat> I, when I found how some of my colleagues were uh, doing uh, releases of a new package versions using that tool, uh, that, that made me <clears throat> cringe a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a tool and it's it's use, useful when when you don't have access to uh, to the sources. Uh, I, I don't think it's installed by default, but it's it, it's there somewhere. You, you can install it by path. I don't remember the package name. Uh, so yeah, th there are ways around that. But, well, if 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 it's a you know vendor package that cannot be modified because otherwise it's not supported, then. Not much you can do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this one was so interesting. <laughs> because I, I explained to a, to a colleague how to, uh, how to make uh, proper RPM packages. And the, fir the first of his releases was fine. And then he released an update. And then I found this in, 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 his, in his updated package. And I said, what are you doing, man? I think. I told you how to do things properly. I don't even remember the explanation, but yeah, that, that was terrible. Because uh, which which VMware product was that? A player. Okay, I I actually haven't haven't touched that or used that. But Yeah. I. <laughs> yeah. I. IBM. IBM software does that a lot. I. I think I, I tried to to force. Uh, what was it? Uh, some Tivoli monitoring agent into in, into a proper RPM. Uh, then I found it was actually. Uh, it, it, it was an installer, uh, Tarball with an installer script, which, which also contained RPM binaries, and it was installing RPM during the in, uh, RPM packages during the install process. So uh, it was it was terrible. But yeah. it's it's what you have to work with in a in a big company which which uses a lot of uh, proprietary software. So. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, that. <laughs> yeah, I, not, nothing against IBM personally, just some pieces of it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, mm, don't do this. Uh, just put, ex extract everything in, in, in the section where you're supposed to, which is install. If, if the software is <clears throat> stubborn and, <clears throat> for example, was asking for root uh, during install because they, they were ass assuming that an admin would just run their install script and you can try using fake root or sudo and it, it works in most, uh, most cases, so mm, I recommend trying at least. And, uh, well, Worst case, you, ca you, can, you can actually run the installer in the install, uh, in, in, in a post-install scriptlet, but uh, then put ev every file in the file section and, and uh, use Ghost. <laughs> but that, that's the absolutely worst case. I actually tried that please, one, but... Please don't, uh, don't do that with the post-install script. If you absolutely must do something like that, please put it in a system D unit that starts on the next boot. If you try to do that during uh, Anaconda install, it's not even yeah. yeah, exactly. There is no, <coughs> no terminal even. So, but <coughs> people do things. 
And yeah, that, that's what I, of course, the, the names of the libraries are, of course, uh, real. Uh, the paths are not, but uh, we, we had a package um, that, that did something like that. And um, then I, I think I tried to uninstall curl, and it succeeded. And then something else stopped working, because the curl was already, well, libcurl in this case was already provided by so, yeah, I mean, this is bundling, right? And bundling uh, of things that we have in, in the main distribution. So, <clears throat> you can, of course, do bundling, but do it properly uh, and, and filter out uh, those uh, libra duplicated libraries from, from the metadata so they, they are not exposed to RPM database. And uh, don't <laughs> conflict uh, or make your uh, software pretend that it provides something that's not for general consumption. So yeah, <clears throat> that's that's why uh, tools like you know, RPM Diff, RPM Inspect can help also, if, even for non-Fedora packages. Of course, they will fail all the many of the Fedora tests, but still the output will be useful. And since you can select which tests to run, or I guess you can also write your own tests, uh, yeah, that will be useful. Oh, uh, that's, that's all the cases I had. Uh, but just before the talk, we had a beginning of an interesting discussion with, with, with Tom <laughs> about, about tech life being a real monster in, in Fedora. And he did some marvelous uh, things to make it less horrible. Yeah, but you can still eat your children, but <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, if you have any questions or have any interesting cases to uh, discuss, I have a couple of packages that, uh, for annoying reasons, in order to install them, they're at, at, at uh, packaging time only. They require a bunch of uh, Node.js npms. Uh, but something like 700 of them. Wow. <laughs> uh, 650 of them not packaged in Fedora. So my, and I'm aware that this is ugly, but I, I'm doing it anyways. I, 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 because it, it, because it, it can't be removed from trying to, trying to contact NPM and use these NPMs. I pre-download them as I'm packaging. I totally stick them in a tarball, expect that tarball in the, uh, in the prep step so that it doesn't go out to, uh, to uh, the NPM's uh, registry, but it is rather ugly, at least they don't, they don't need to be used in, at runtime, so. Yeah, that's what I would probably do as well when pressed for time, because, well, you, you can't, uh, I mean, it would take months to, or maybe years to package 600 dependencies, uh, so. But oh, oh, 600 dependencies, but they're different every release. Wow. Because the, the things, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's, it's a horrible graph uh -huh. of what NPM dependencies look like. Yeah. The same pack, the, the, you, could, you could bump a, a point release on your dependency and its 20 dependencies will have all changed. So, you know, we'll build through a Yeah. So, I think, I mean, to do it properly, I think automated packaging is the only way. Like, yeah. like I think, so, I was, I know someone did it with Python, just took all of PyPy and uh, built RPMs out of that automatically. Was it Miro or someone else? I yeah. think uh, also we have a lot of work done for uh, Go ecosystem for this. But yeah, it would have to. Yeah, it's really actively designed uh -huh. to be in system location. Yeah. So, so okay. uh, what Steven said, that's actually how, uh, that, that's the way how we I mean, Go also tries to uh, download all these dependencies during build, so unless you already have them. But yeah, the mo modern modern language stacks are kind of like that. So. Uh, I'm, I'm following 
RPM build tech on Stack Overflow. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants such stories. Uh, there are stories like, uh, how do I install this RPM dependency only if this package is installed on system where is some user in ATCPS password. Uh, so mm. they are trying to <laughs> Interesting. Like very ugly boss scriptlets. Uh, uh, this more of such. But there's yeah, some more reasonable story from script. Uh, uh, just past week, uh, I was on workshop with packet guys. And the, the packet doesn't work for me. Uh, it was nicely packaged, uh, but it failed on requiring Python module uh, Ogre, OGR, uh, which was their own module, uh, but it doesn't work. I was able to import that module, but not uh, some other submodules of that okay. class from that. And it was unable to find why it doesn't work. Uh, to make this story short, at the end we find that uh, there exists some other module OGR, uh, which is part of GDAL, which is Geographic mm -hmm. Tool. Uh, it's not provided like the Python Ogre, neither in packet neither in GDAL, but the GDAL version was like uh, compiled, so it was a different path, while the uh, packet was normal, uh, no arc, so it was in different part, there was no collision, so you were able to install both version, but of course, it didn't have those correct class, so it was masked, uh, the GDAL version was loaded first. Uh, so that's, that's one interesting fact, uh, thing which uh, none of our QE uh, mm, tool uh, catched. Right, so it, it was a case of, of name overlap. Not, it, it wasn't the same yeah, software, same just, in, just the same name. Yeah, I, I, I have a similar case, just came to my mind when I was trying to package something new and uh, it had a dependency on a uh, Broadly module. Uh, there are actually two implementations which are, I think, uh, completely or mostly API compatible. <laughs> one is Broadly and one is Broadly Pi, but they provide the same uh, module name. And what one is in Fedora, one isn't. <laughs> or maybe it is already, uh, I, I haven't checked in the last few months. But, uh, and, and the developers of the software I was trying to, uh, to package, because uh, so, I think the one in Fedora is implemented, uh, is pure Python, and the, the one that was a d dependency is uh, rewritten in, in C. Uh, so it's a C Python module. Um, so they, they said that they want to use that one because that's faster. Uh, but still, there is a name, uh, uh, well, module name uh, clash, but not project name clash. So it, it actually installs into different, different directory. And yeah, and so there are the traps you have to watch for and, and avoid. Yes, Tom. Someone sent me a package a while ago for review. They couldn't figure out why it wasn't building in Koji. And uh, the configured tool was querying GitHub repos to pull down dependencies automatically and failing if it didn't. I wasn't able to succeed. And so the, the person packaging this attempted to solve this problem by adding a prescriptlet that was trying to use NMCLI to turn on the network. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> wow. <laughs> And they were a little disappointed that this wasn't working, and they were wondering if they'd gotten the network manager command line syntax incorrect. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I respected their attempt to solve that problem, but I, I set them a little bit straight. Hmm. The other thing is that they made the earlier story. Chromium has a check for specific fonts with specific checksums. It doesn't need them. It just makes sure that they're in the directory, and it's not in their Git tree. So part of a Chromium source file is a download of these font files, shoving them in the directory so it can pass the build check and build them. They're not packaged. Yeah. I guess that was easier than patching the build script. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Any more questions, stories? So thank you all for coming.